Riddle me this. You have two firearms and need one more to participate in an IPC three gun match. How do you prove this to the Austrian government? Well, by shooting an IPC three gun match. Doesn't make sense? Welcome to Austrian Gun Law Part 5. Hey, hey, hey. In Austrian Gun Law Part 4, I told you how to obtain a firearms license. With this freshly and ah, good smelling firearm license, you can own up to two semi-auto firearms or pistols. In this video, I will tell you how to get more firearms in Austria. The primary method for Austrians to get a bigger firearms license is to play the waiting game. Mm. You have to wait five years from the moment you got your initial firearms license, and then you can apply for an upgrade from two to five semi-auto firearms or pistols. No questions asked. But for the next upgrade, it's a bit more tricky. You have to be in a sports shooting club that you can be classified as a sports shooter. So, if you try the sports shooting club, you have to wait another five years. After five years, you will get an upgrade from five to seven semi-auto firearms or pistols. You have to wait again five years to get from seven to nine. And finally, you have to wait another five years from getting from nine to ten firearms. So. If you could have math, you already know this. Hmm, that's a freaking long time. Yes, it is. If you haven't done the math yet, from the moment you got your initial firearms license and two firearms or pistol slots on it, you have to wait 20 years to get it up to 10 firearms or pistols. There is a reason for the five year period in between each time you can apply for a bigger gun license. And that's the gun checkups. As a firearms holder that actually owns guns on his gun license, you will get visited by the Austrian police every five years. They will check if you store your weapons correctly, if you store your magazines correctly, if all the weapons in your possessions are having the correct uh, registration numbers. And of course, it would be very bad if you're having weapons in your possession that you shouldn't have. So with a registry number that is not on your gun license. Oh. And these checkups are mandatory. So if you refuse to let the police in too often, you can refuse one time for undisclosed reasons. You know, for example, if you have a stomach edge or whatever, you don't want the police uh, in your home checking your gun safe and guns. You can say, okay, please come back later. But if you do that too often, they will eventually take away your firearms license and firearms. So these checks have to be done. If you want even more firearms than the tens you have after playing the winning game, or if you want them faster rather than waiting 20 years for it, you have to go the competition shooters route. As the name says, you have to do shooting competitions. The tricky part here is you have to do shooting competitions with the firearms you don't own yet. For example, if you have uh, two firearms on your gun license, uh, Glock 9mm and an AR-15 223. You have to shoot competitions with an uh, 762 semi-auto rifle and a 44 Magnum revolver. Because this is the way that you can prove to the Austrian government that you really need more firearms for competitions because you don't have these firearms already. Kinda makes sense, kinda sucks because how can you do shooting competitions with weapons that you don't have yet? But you gotta be careful when doing this method. Because when you apply for a bigger gun license with the um, competition shooters route, you have to tell the government what firearms you want to buy. For example, if you're saying, I will have two firearms, it's an AR-15 and it's a Glock, but I want a 44 Magnum revolver and I want a rimfire pistol, then you have to bring them competition results from the 44 revolver and for the rimfire pistol. If you bring that competition result from, let's say, the 7.62 semi-auto rifle, they won't accept it as a reason for you to needing more guns, because obviously you haven't shot the competitions for the guns you want. Let me give you another example of what won't work. If you have an AR-15 223 on your gun license as well as the Glock 9mm and you're saying to the Austrian government, hey, I want to do IPC open class and therefore I need another AR-15 223 so I can completely tune it and participate in the open class. Austrian government will say, uh-uh, no, 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 why do you need two 223 AR-15 rifles? Just sell the one you got already and buy 
the R15 223 for IPSC shooting competitions instead. To make things even more time consuming, you also have to do shooting competitions with the firearms you already got. Because again, if you just bring them lists of weapons you don't have, they can always say just sell the ones you already have and buy the ones you want instead. So you have to shoot the firearms you don't have in competitions as well as the firearms you have in competitions. Depending on where you live in Austria, you have to bring multiple competition results for each firearm. For example, in Vienna, as a rule of thumb, you should bring four competition results for every firearm you have and every firearm you want. In other parts of Austria, in a more rural area, usually this works with less competition results, for example, two or maybe some even grant you the new gun license if you just have one competition for each firearm. Basically, that's because the people in the rural area, the government institutions, they don't want to hustle with the paperwork. Now, here's another curveball the government in Austria throws at you. This competition's results cannot be older than six months when you bring it to the government institution to apply for the bigger gun license. So, six months doesn't sound that bad. But now, let's keep with my example of my hometown Vienna. You have two firearms and you want another two firearms. That means you need 16 competition results within the time frame of six months. Okay, now let's go for another example. You have already 10 firearms because you played a waiting game and you want five more. That means you need to bring 60 competition results that were shot within a six month time period. You're probably wondering now, is it even possible? Yes, it is possible. There are shooting clubs that do several competitions on a single day. There are also shooting clubs who offer uh, mail-in shooting competitions where you shoot at the targets yourself and mail them in. Of course, this is about being honest and such stuff, but it's a very good method because if you have a long waiting time in between uh, shooting competitions from shooting clubs, you can do those mail-in competitions to get some more results. So let me give you an example how the regular version with the shooting competition on a single day work. For example, a shooting club does a shooting competition on Saturday from 9 to 5. At the shooting competition, you will shoot at a paper target that's 10 meters away, 10 shots. Sounds easy enough. They offer the same shooting competition with the 10 meters and 10 shots for Glock pistols, for 9 mm pistols, for 45 pistols, for rimfire pistols, for rimfire revolvers, for snub nose revolvers, for 44 magnum revolvers, for uh, 357 <laughs> revolvers, uh, for service pistols and for pistols in your own systems. That would be 10 shooting competitions that you can do on a single day at a single location. Of course, you need the firearms for that. So it's best to team up with your buddies who have guns that you don't have, trade guns back and forth, so everyone can shoot as much shooting competitions as possible. And most of the time, these shooting clubs who offer these shooting competitions with lots of competitions on a single day, they will offer gun rental as well. But as always, be aware, it won't help if you just bring all these competitions results to the Austrian government. You have to bring the competition results to the Austrian government that you are applying for a gun that you want to have. So don't bring them a rimfire pistol shooting competition and say that's the reason why you want an AR-10 762 semi-auto rifle. But what does that mean when you finally have your expanded gun license? Do you really have to buy a snub nose revolver that you told the Austrian government you need? No, they won't force you to buy the weapon you told them you will buy. So for example, you had the two firearm slots already, you expanded to a total of four firearm slots by saying you need a rimfire pistol and a rimfire revolver, but you can buy two brand new AR-15s anyway. They won't care, but be advised. If you are applying for another firearms expansion of your gun license, for example, from four to eight firearms, the whole game starts again. They will see that you already have two AR-15s, two to three on your gun license, and they will say, why do you need two of the same rifles? Just sell one of the rifles and get one of the guns you want instead. So you always have to find this balance of reasons 
why you need new firearms and why you need the firearms you already have. All I told you so far is for category B firearms, semi-automatic firearms and pistols. If you need to check up on what that is exactly, you can go to the Austrian Gun Law part 3 of this video series. So, if you're a sports shooter, a competition shooter, you can apply to transform some of these category B slots on your firearm license to category A. That means you can use bigger magazines. That doesn't mean you can use full autos, it just means that you can use bigger magazines. Because pistols have a magazine limit of 20 rounds in Austria and rifles have a magazine limit of 10 rounds in Austria. This isn't exactly what a competition shooter needs. So if you're a competition shooter, meaning you're in a shooting club, you're doing at least one trainings in the year, or you're doing at least three shooting competitions every year, and you have a letter of your shooting club that confirms that one of these conditions applies, you can go to the Austrian government and say, hello, I need that Glock 9mm that's currently a category B to be transformed to a category A for bigger magazines. If you have done that, you are Gun license will say a uh, category A firearm Z7 or Z8. Z7 is for pistols, Z8 is for rifles instead of just category B firearms. If you have a category A slot, and that's why I call it slot, you can still sell that AR15 223 you have on the category A slot and get another rifle instead that you can put on the category A slot. That means you can sell your category A AR-15 and get an Steyr AOG instead and can buy 30 round magazines for the Steyr AOG without problems. You heard about the waiting game now and you heard about the competition shooters route. But there are two other ways how you can expand your gun license in Austria. One of these is by being a gun collector. Usually that won't work anymore. It worked back then and it worked if you are outside of Vienna but right now applying for a gun collector's license isn't a thing. But there are still people who have those uh, almost um, mysterious <laughs> gun collector's licenses. They are around and they have like 50, 100 or even 200 gun slots <laughs> on the firearm license, which is totally crazy. Of course, it helps if you have a private museum or it helps if you are a gun store owner or if you are a manufacturer of gun accessories or whatever. That's usually a good reason to at least apply for that collector's license. But as a normal person, it is, the chances are very slim that you get a collector's license. And the other option is to inherit firearms. If a firearm of the category B is inherited to you, the Austrian government has to grant you the slot on your gun license to accept this firearm. Sounds okay, right? But please don't go around and search for old shooters at the shooting range and ask them if they can buy a firearm for you that they will later inherit to you. That's kind of weird. Let's talk about relevant gun parts now in Austria. Relevant gun parts are controlled and therefore cannot be just bought online or in a shop or whatever. They need to be registered on your gun license. So what are these relevant gun parts? Relevant gun parts are the barrel, the bolt and the receiver if it has gas pressure on it. What does that mean? Well, nobody really knows. We do know that it's revolver frames, but for example, an empty AR-15 upper or an AR-15 complete lower doesn't count as a receiver that has gas pressure on it. So it's a bit like, huh? <laughs> anyway, the barrel and the bolt can be combined to a so-called Wechsel system. This Wechsel system is basically what you Americans and other people know as a complete upper assembly. For example, that would be an AR-15 upper with the barrel and bolt installed or it would be a complete pistol upper with the frame, the slide and the spring assembly. You are allowed to have double the number of relevant gun parts as you have slots on your gun license. Let me give you an example. If you're having five firearms, you can have 10 relevant gun parts on your firearms license. So, for example, one of them is an AR-15 and four of them are snub-nose revolvers. 
That means you can still get 10 AR-15 complete upers with barrel, etc. Because the relevant gun parts doesn't have to fit specifically to the guns you already have on your firearms license. But what happens if you want that 11th AR-15 upper receiver? Well, you either have to get more slots on your gun license or you have to apply for that relevant gun part to be added to your firearm license. Usually you will be granted this additional relevant gun part, but you have to go again to the government, you have to give them money, you have to get a new British gun license, costs money, costs time, so you better um, be a bit more economic with the relevant gun parts you're buying. Also, and here's the important part, let's say you have a spare lower receiver. Don't install that spare lower receiver on an AR-15 upper assembly you got, because that would mean you have, in our example, six firearms instead of just five. If you want to do that, you always have to disassemble one of the other firearms as well. So, you're having five firearms, you're having 10 upper receivers, you're having a spare lower receiver. Before installing that spare lower receiver on one of the AR-15 uppers, take your AR-15 and remove the lower receiver from the AR-15. So you still have just five firearms if you install that spare lower on your upper assembly. If you've seen my other videos from this Austrian gun law series, you know what comes next. Exceptions! Of course, there are exceptions here too. And these exceptions are for old timers. As you probably already know, everything that's shorter than 60 centimeters counts as a pistol in Austria is therefore category B and therefore needs a slot on your gun license. But if the gun design of a specific pistol is older than 1871, you can buy that if you have a gun license, but it doesn't take a gun slot away on your gun license. That means you can buy as many black powder revolvers and pistols as you want, as long as you can safely store them at your home. The second exception is for firearms that have been manufactured before 1900. For example, if you're such a lucky bastard and can find a Mauser C96 that was made in 1896, you can buy that and it won't take away a slot on your gun license. Of course, you still need the gun license, but it won't take away the slot on it even though it's a pistol and it's even a cartridge pistol. Wow, <laughs> that was a lot of information and you made it through. I'm so proud of you guys and girls. That actually concludes the Austrian gun law series. There will be another part that sums all the things up you have heard and seen in the past five videos. So in case you want to freshen up or just want the executive summary, that sum up version will be coming shortly. Oh, and if you want to support me, please check out scarity.redbubble.com. I've put up my designs for t-shirts and other prints there. Well, until we meet again, guys. Cheerio!